Yeah, this is John from All Points TV, and um, again, we're doing something like uh, kind of different out of the ordinary, and actually I think it's very uh, good to hear about this news. Um, we're talking to a group uh, who is the part of a cast and crew of a movie called The Tempest that's being made mostly here in Michigan. So guys, introduce yourselves, and we'll start off from there. Maddox Montague, I'm the director, actually, of The Tempest. I work for Prophecy Films, Incorporated. Uh, actually, Kevin Allen was supposed to be here today. He is the executive producer for the company and um, he actually couldn't make it. He had prior engagements. Um, we're actually really excited about this film. Um, it's gonna be a huge opportunity for a lot of local actors in Michigan. Um, we originally decided that we were gonna go with bigger named actors and, and such, and we decided that after meeting with a few people that we were going to do Michigan talent and show people, show the whole country and the world for that matter, that um, you know Michigan has a lot of really you know, awesome actors to, you know, put out there to the world. So I'm going to go ahead and let them introduce themselves and where they came from and what kind of experience that they have. So go ahead, Brian. Uh, my name is Brian Cascorius. I'm a Michigan actor. I, uh, done a few shorts, uh, called the Denison wire. Um, I'm coming for you. Uh, a couple of web series, uh, AOB and Trudy. Um, I auditioned for Matic for the, for one of his short films, uh, we met there, he cast me for that, and uh, kind of snowballed into The Tempest. Go ahead, James. I'm James Hudson. Uh, I'm a Michigan actor. I uh, actually started about a year ago, and uh, I did a few short films, a couple of, uh, couple of plays, things like that, and uh, I just kind of, one day I heard about an audition for The Itch, it was called, and uh, me and uh, Jarrett were here decided to go and give it a shot and uh, yeah here we are. Go ahead Jarrett. Jarrett Ross uh, took off kind of acting in high school a little bit, drama club and all that. Not really too much but about a year ago with James here I really took off and started doing anything we could. Short films, TV series, a YouTube series and here we are. You can go ahead and tell them about that. YouTube series, if you want to. The YouTube series? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, we have a, a show on YouTube called uh, Generation Armageddon. It's um, post-apocalyptic about after the, uh, after the bombs fall. We, um, we got together with a few friends of ours, and uh, uh, a buddy wrote a really nice script for it, so we just we kind of rolled with it, and uh, we both got pretty big roles. So I don't know. From there, we kind of just... Yeah, you guys are definitely, um, James Hudson, and actually all three of these guys are phenomenal actors. Um, we actually have um, a few other cast members that couldn't make it today, too, um, and they're, they're phenomenal actors or actresses as well. Um, Tanya Hawkins, um, she's playing a major role in the film, and uh, Carrie Torres, uh, she's um, playing a role in the film as well. And if I forgot anybody's name, please forgive me. Um, but on December 7th, we actually are still casting for this film. So you can go to the, the Facebook um, page for Prophecy Films Incorporated and there's notices on there that tell you how to get involved, um, where to send your headshots and your resumes and things like that. Also, we need crew members from you know Michigan. And um, as far as uh, the, the trip is concerned, um, Prophecy Films Incorporated is actually paying for the whole trip. They're paying for the travel, food, and, and lodging while you're there. So it's, it's a really big... It's a, it's a really, really big um, thing for Michigan actors to get their name out there across the whole country, you know. I mean, so the thing is, is that, you know, we figured coming to a local venue like All Points TV was a, was a great avenue to go instead of going to, you know, New York or a few of the other places that have actually asked us to do an interview about The Tempest. We wanted to give All Points TV the first debut of... Um, you know that full-length feature film. Uh, also, Prophecy Films. This is not. This isn't a indie film either. It's not an independent film. So you know, our our competition out there is Universal Studios and stuff like that. So we're a really small film company trying to jump into that big pond. You know, so with all these great actors and and things like that, it shouldn't be a problem. You know, so um, I actually wish that Kevin Allen could be here. Kevin Allen is actually. Um, an amazing actor, an amazing person. He's been in many films. He's been an extra in a, in a huge film that's coming out later this year. And I'm unfortunately, I can't tell you what it is, but you'll see him in, in the film, I'm sure. 
Um, I can tell you that Ben Affleck's in that movie. Um, another thing is, too, is that uh, local musicians and things like that, you can also get involved um, when we go to make our soundtrack for the movie. Instead of going to ASCAP and all of those companies to pay major artists, we decided that we want to make it all Michigan, like a, a Michigan-made film. Uh, we're going to do about a week of it in New Orleans, and then we're going with like 15-hour days um, for a week. And then we're going to come back to Detroit and film right and film the rest of the film in Detroit itself. No, so there's going to be any um, uh, area, you know, things shot in the Flint area though. I mean, is there going to be any actual like, footage or? Uh, we're going to be filming. We're going fil Flint is definitely on the location for uh, for the for the actual shoots. Um, I don't know how much of the movie right now because I don't have, like I said, I don't have the call sheets or the script or anything on me, or you know, or whatever. But I know that some of it will be f filmed in Flint. Um, the majority of it will be filmed in Detroit, so um, I do know that like this is you know for for us as a, a company and also for all of these actors you know uh, we've we've been out there so you know to have them go out and actually get to experience this New Orleans trip and to experience the red carpet event that we're going to be throwing in Detroit. Uh, we decided actually to do that um, in Michigan instead of out in Hollywood or out in uh, in New York. So, see, that's really a good. Uh, people don't realize the potential payoff for that economically, as well as basically weaving your weaving us into the fabric of you know being the filmmaking industry. Because um, this face those premieres like that are big events, big money get you know they they cost a lot of money to put on, and that's you know it trickles down into the economy of the local communities that are taking place in and. Uh, that's where I, you know, Pete Snyder, Governor Snyder, has been criticized because of cutting the budget for films and stuff in Michigan. But um, and this is a, that's why I want to emphasize too is, the you know, Prophecy uh, Films is actually, despite that cutback, still filming in Michigan. I mean, right. There's actually, believe it or not, there's a lot of major Hollywood movies that are being filmed in Michigan. It's just that uh, you know a lot of your local film companies and independent um, companies and things like that. It's so hard for them to get to the level to where they're making full-length feature films. Because of those cutbacks, there's not grants available for them like they used to be, so they, they have to finance everything on a much smaller scale, so. Now, so we're just curious. Um, now, this is gonna be, we're putting this out on the internet, you know, and we're talking about it on the internet, so I mean, this is like the big, big emphasis nowadays is to have like websites where people can check the progress of the film. Uh, will that be available for the public to see? I mean, maybe, uh, you know, Maybe scenes from the upcoming film or whatever available. When website. when we go when we go down to New Orleans when we come back about a week maybe two weeks after we get back there'll be a trailer being released to the general public um, for what the film's about and it'll go into mass marketing um, to advertise the film on a global level and then when the film is actually done it's going to be sold and introduced into the domestic and foreign market. It's going to be worldwide, not just in the United States, not just in Michigan. So, yeah, and that, that's really encouraging, though, that all despite the cutbacks in the for the film industry in Michigan, I mean, I'm glad to see it still going on. And it doesn't seem to diminish it from the news I've been hearing that uh, there's still a lot of groups out there, despite the, the incentive, the monetary incentive that was being offered before, not being no longer offered. There's still a lot of you know a lot of movement made with movies here, and a lot of talent. Like uh, Tom Sumner would always say, and I think you'd agree, the talent pool in and around Flint and I would say Southeast Michigan is as good as it gets anywhere in probably in the United States or the rest of the world. And uh, and not only does I mean let's face it, you have the cast and the technical aspects of it, you have the crew and the you know all that stuff. I mean, there is a there is a talent pool that potentially exists that could probably outstrip anything out on the West Coast. Well, here's the deal, too. I mean, you know, another thing is, is that a lot of Michigan, I mean, a lot of actors that are out there in Michigan going and doing this, they're, they're phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And Michigan actually has quite a few acting schools and filmmaking schools. And one of them, the Actors Loft down in Royal Oak, actually, and um, with Hugh, he has a school down there that, and they're just phenomenal. I had the, I had the pleasure of going into one of the classes last night for filmmaking and um, sitting on it and be a part of it and it's just absolutely phenomenal the amount of talent that you see in a room and these people are just your normal average Joes walking around on the streets you would never think that you know they have the amount of talent that they have to just snap right into a role or to be a director or to be a producer 
and, and do things. And like, you know, people like him, like Hugh, he actually is trying to push more and more and more out there as far as the acting goes and more classes and things like that. So, I mean, you know, people also can get a hold of him through the Actors Loft and try to, you know, get into an acting class. And, and I encourage anybody from somebody just starting out to somebody who is a veteran actor or director or producer can go to, the, to him and actually uh, learn a lot. I mean, I learned a lot in one night. I mean, you know, and I have nine more weeks of, of class um, down there. So now the rest of the crew, I mean, the, you know, the cast here, I mean, you have like one of you mentioned that you were in high school and you took like you were in drama classes and stuff. Um, there are also, I think, in the, um, in the Detroit area, there is like a motion picture. Institute. The Motion Picture Institute. Institute. Yeah, that's exactly what uh, Michigan P Motion Picture Institute, MMPI. And I'd love to get those guys. I've tried to get those to come up here and talk about, you know, what they do down there. But uh, are any of you connected or affiliated or have attended classes or have a connection? No, we're not connected with MPI at all. Yeah. But I mean, it's like, a, I think, you know, it's from what I see with the backdrops we have available here and, you know, the, the simple areas where you can do scenes and you can actually, there's a huge amount of like, you know, post-industrial shot, you know, areas where you can shoot, you know, the, the decaying rust build, the, the rust buckets, you know, and those are kind of in, interesting backdrops, especially the movies you're talking about. I mean, the, the kind of a darker, you know, the more seedier side of existence. I mean, we, let's face it, Michigan, Southeast Michigan's got more than, we're doing more than the chock full of them, you know, to actually shoot at. So, I mean, that, that, pot, that potential right. does exist. Right. And, you know, another thing, too, is that I'd like to touch on, and I didn't even say who wrote the script. <laughs> uh, Kevin Allen, actually, the executive producer, actually wrote the script of The Tempest. And, and it, was, it was really strange because, like, we were, working on, we were working on putting the itch together, and Kevin had been writing this script for quite a while. And, uh, you know, he kept telling me about it every once in a while and this and that. And then, you know, I started reading the script, and I was like, I was like, oh my God, I've got to see this movie. And Kevin's like, well, we could make it, you know. And it's weird how like an idea will spark something as great as a bunch of people getting together and trying to make something creatively, you know what I mean? And, you know, I think that plays in a lot with, um, you know, the, the characters as well as like, the actors that are involved. You know, in a very short amount of time, we've all became really close friends, you know, and that's the thing. I mean, it's all, it's, it's really surreal and strange to see how, how fast something can materialize right in front of you when you, when you really want it. And the, the difference between, like, the Tempest vampire film and any other vampire film that's out there is the research that's been done behind the scenes and things like that is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, Kevin Allen actually went and researched and brought in like the whole Christian side of things and like the demonology and stuff like that and made it more um, realistic than just some magical creature, you know what I mean, that just popped up out of nowhere, which I think would be really cool because it will relate to a lot of people um, and, you know, the amount of drama that happens in it is, and then also the horror and there's some comedic, there's some comedy in it. Um, it's definitely going to be a film that's going to be amazing. I mean, you know, we've, we've been working really hard on the script and we've been casting, you know, and, and here's another thing that will blow your guys' minds. We put a casting call out for The Tempest and we had, within, within eight hours, I had over 200 people. And now, that after a couple weeks of, of putting the casting out there, we've had over, last night I did the count and we were way over 400. 400 Michigan actors applying to have roles in this film and that doesn't even include the the amount of makeup artists the amount of hairdressers the costuming people and everything else that are involved in that have been contacted or had contacted us so like and another thing is we'll go right to the movie itself the tempest you've already kind of touched upon that i mean it's going to be shot in new orleans which has kind of got a you know the that imagery comes to me everybody who's seen the Anne rice you know interviews of the vampire and stuff like that there's they, they, you know, that, that whole area, that area there has got this kind of mystical, kind of a dark quality to it. Um, now, this movie is, is, is set, is, is it a set in the past, historic past, or comes to the future? The film is actually set in the present. Okay. Like, it's not going to be like a Victorian age vampire movie. It's going to be present time. And uh, what I can say about the film, The Tempest is actually a, an inn. And there's, you know, in the one thing I can say about the film, because I can't say a lot because it'll give it away, um, is that, you know, a bunch of people come up missing in the town or in the city, 
and then the Tempest has always been known as this like haunted place or this weird, you know, um, inn and creepy. And the thing is, is that you know the plot line of the story is, is that you know the 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 sheriff's department's investigating the missing people, and then um, actually Brian is playing um, an FBI agent in the film. And he's brought in to go undercover, and that's like the opening scene of the movie, and it's it's going to be absolutely amazing, and 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 Brian through the whole film, Brian Brian's role is struggled with the morality of things on top of all of the temptation that's in front of his eyes. So you know it's going to be it's going to be an absolutely mind blowing film when it's done, and we have uh, Howard Levine actually is uh, is a cinematographer that's known across the country he's absolutely amazing and he's going to be doing all the cinematography on the film and you know the the all of the crew and stuff are all world-class crew members so it's going to be absolutely amazing it's going to be a fun film and it's going to be something way out of the box that you know doesn't fit into the norm when it comes to a hollywood production which it isn't in a way i mean you've got the caliber of the production quality but Basically, I mean, I, I get personally get tired of seeing the same backdrops over and over again. If I see the the, hill, the foothills of L.A. once again in a shot, I'm going to scream, pull my hair out. And I'm right. Because I mean, I'm just well, see, you know, that. and, and, and here's you know, the, here's the funny over part over about it too is that you know we have because um, Prophecy Films actually accepts scripts from anybody for that matter. Um, and the thing is, we get I get probably about twenty to twenty five scripts a month sent to me to read to find out if we want to make it into a movie. And, and unfortunately, we can't make everybody's movie into a movie. But we have um, a few after The Tempest that we already have lined up to film. So The Tempest is not going to be the last film that we do. We have a couple more horror movies. We actually have a comedy that we're going to do. Um, and actually, Kevin Allen, we're going to have, we have a short that's going to be coming out. Um, we're probably going to try to film it at the same time that we're filming The Tempest. But uh, it's called Drag Hags. And it's it's just a it's just a really funny funny script. Um, it's not big enough to make into a movie, but it's definitely going to be a series that's going to probably be either on YouTube or Netflix or something like that. Um, I can tell you that the Tempest is going to be it's going to be produced and cut into DVD format and Blu-ray, and then also um, it should be available to purchase um, download through Amazon as well as other things. And we do have a couple networks, which I have, I'm not allowed to say who they are yet, but um, they're satellite companies that are possibly going to literally publish the film to their, their network. So, you know, so, I mean, this is a huge opportunity. No, I just, um, and a lot of people go right directly to, Red, you know, uh, was it Redbox or whatever that, you know, that video service, you see the kiosk, right. those electronic kiosks set up. No, but I, I think it's encouraging. Now, another thing I've got to follow through, too, on here is, like, um, you said you're going to be making a lot more movies. Um, I know there's a lot of people watching this, and they're going to say, I'm a script writer. Um, is there some place that you can give right now where they can maybe send an email to or a script idea to or <coughs> maybe send a treatment or something like that to somebody? Is there any place you can give out? They can, if they have Facebook, like I said, they can go to Prophecy Films. On, or it's, it's, it's actually Prophecy Films LLC on through Facebook. Um, they can do that, and they can either message us through there, or they can go to my page, the Matic Montague director actor page, and I have information on there on what films we're going to do, and I put it out there, you know, to filmmakers and stuff. A lot of the people that contact me contact me through my my actor director page, and then you know I'll give them my email, uh, you know, if it, if it's something that we're interested in doing. I'm going to so. get I'm gonna chance to get the other people there with you too. Um, is there any place that people could find the rest of you at, like on Facebook or and talking to the guys there and be back behind you there, against the wall and everybody else? I mean, give out contact information to if people who are interested in, you know, maybe they see you here and saying, I'm doing a production, maybe you want to be involved in my production later. Is there any place they can reach you, any of you at? Uh, yeah, the main place you can reach pretty much me and James is uh, Doc Ross on Facebook and James Hudson on Facebook. We don't usually go through too many uh, other things until we get messaged on there. We'll normally give our emails afterwards, but we're literally just starting, so to have, you know, we're, we're welcome to anybody to just shoot it out there. We've got to get an agency, both of you, both, all of, all of you, you probably do have an agent, I know Maddie probably. Well, I think Maddie Prophecy Plus, Films right? Incorporated actually acts as their agent, so um, the problem with just giving out their contact information through the internet or on a show, and even mine, is that 
we have an astronomical amount of emails that Prophecy Films gets on a daily basis um, and that I get and have to go through. I mean, anywhere between 400 to like 900 a day. That's quite so, a bit. That's quite a bit. So I can understand that. And I'm really looking, I'm kind of geeked up because I've known Matic for quite a few years now. And um, the rest of you, I'm really hoping to see your careers really take off. I mean, and especially you, I mean, especially when you really have this aspiration, to, you know, in high school to take the drama classes. I mean, I like to see people's, you know, dreams come true, if you will. I mean, it's, you know, I never, like, I never had this overarching idea of what I want to do when I grew up. I'm still looking for it. So, I mean, these guys, you guys are ahead of the game on that respect where I'm not. I mean, I, I'm doing this. But <laughs> anyway, but I'm really glad to see you guys doing this. And um, any kind of information before we wrap this up here that you want to give out? And, and of course, the, uh, when is the attended release date for The Tempest, wherever it's going to be released at? And the attended know? release date would be um, summer of next year, not this coming summer. So it would be summer of 2016. We're going to be filming, uh, like I said, for a week in New Orleans, but we're going to be filming for about six months in Detroit and Flint and surrounding areas. And then it has to go off to the editors and, you know, the productions people behind the scenes to do all the movie magic because that's where all the movies actually, that's where all the magic comes from. That, so. you know, it sounds like a really intriguing project. And, of course, then again, I mean, knowing a little bit of all production that I do you know, in the post-production, I mean, that's a lot of work. There's a lot of work, and not only being in the grueling, set, you know, day-to-day -day grind of being there on a, a well, set. So you know, I think that the thing, the main thing is that a lot of people don't understand is that, you know, when you're on a movie set and you're behind the scenes, like, to get three minutes worth of usable footage, it could take you three hours, you know, and that's why, like, it's so grueling for them. And I'm just, I'm fortunate that I have people like Brian in, in, uh, and James as well as is Jarrett because they are they're so phenomenal that like they can redo a scene like five or six times in a row and do it exactly the same and not have to have a lot of direction when it comes to it uh, you know so when we do like 15 15 hour set days we might only get one scene done in a 15 hour day you know so oh. it's a lot it's a, it's a grueling process there's a lot that goes into it there's a lot more that goes into it than anybody could ever imagine. I, I got a taste for that because I mean I, I have this production and it takes a little bit of tweaking at the same consistent set, you know, working with the same equipment. I'm not going around setting it up where you God knows what you're going to have is incoming uh, background noise that you're going to have to deal with. So I mean I can see that. I mean I've dealt with that doing live, re, not live remotes too. I mean you have to deal with all that stuff and basically a lot to, you'll never know what you're going to run into. So it's, it's basically every day is kind of a trial. It's a trial by fire there, you know, in the, uh, when you're filming. I, I just assume that Especially when you're in places that are unpleasant, like the cold or in extreme heat and humid humidity, you're dealing with all that. You've got to be in costume. You've got to be with makeup. You kind of no. There's there's work behind being an actor. I mean, and a lot of people disregard that or kind of just kind of you know are dismissive of that. And uh, I think that's I think that's just unfortunate for them to have that view. Right. So, so anyway, um, guys, I'm really looking forward to seeing the Tempest, and I definitely I'd encourage you too if you want to do any updates during the time of you know the, the actual yeah. Shooting I mean, you know there. we're. We're all good. I mean, you know, and the thing is, like I said one last time, you know, The Tempest is going to be filmed. It's a Michigan-based film. It's got Michigan actors in it. It's got people involved from all over the state, from costumers to jewelry makers to anybody that could make anything that you could possibly think for a movie, you know. So, I mean, it's, it really opens up the, the whole world for the economy in Michigan, too. You know, the more films that get made in Michigan... The, the more people will have a chance to get their name out there, artists and things like that, you know. And the thing is, too, is that, you know, we have a jewelry maker that is just absolutely phenomenal. And that's uh, through K3 Creations. Um, she's making a few things. Her name's Carrie. Uh, she's making a few things for the film, and she is just absolutely phenomenal. Her work is absolutely breathtaking. And to see it captured on film, that, that should help her out as well. And, you know, Prophecy Films, like I said, we're just, it's, it's almost like the name sells itself for the company because it's almost like a prophecy that all these people came together. You know, we just, everybody that's involved has a lot of talent and we're always looking for more talent. We're always looking for more cast and more crew members and things like that. So I encourage anybody to just get out there and um, look us up and get a hold of us. And, you know, we're nice people. So, you know, we'll talk to anybody, you know, and... Well, guys, thank you again for showing up. I know you guys came a quite a bit of distance, and it's cold out, so I really appreciate it. And the Tempest folks, of Prophecy Films Incorporated, you know, keep a keep an eye out for it, and we definitely hope that everything comes together. You guys have a great shooting, you know, schedule. So thanks, John. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.